Hello. Today I would like to introduce you to Rancher Desktop, a free and open source desktop application that lets you run Kubernetes and container management locally on your desktop computer. It works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it's easy to install. For example, on Mac, which I have here, it's as simple as downloading the disk image, taking the application, dragging it into applications, just like most other applications. Uh, it's as easy to use and install as any other desktop app on each system. Now, once you have Rancher Desktop up and running, you'll see it in your uh, taskbar. It, this shows up differently on Mac, Linux, and Windows. In this case, if I come up here and I have the Rancher Desktop logo, I can click on it and I can see what's going on. I can see that Kubernetes is running, I can access my preferences, and I can switch between Kubernetes contexts if I have more than one context that I want my tools like kubectl and Helm to work with. Let's open up preferences. In the general preferences screen, it tells you a little bit about the application and it lets you uh, opt in or disable automatic updates. Uh, the more interesting settings are get in when you look at things like Kubernetes settings. Here you can see that you can choose the version of Kubernetes you want to work with. And there are many different versions. And the reason that we offer so many different versions for you to work with is that quite often you want to mirror what you work with locally with what you're running in QA or production or what your customers are using. There can be little quirks between different versions of Kubernetes, and this lets you use locally that same version you're using elsewhere. It also lets you do things such as test upgrades. If I were to change the version of Kubernetes here to a newer version of Kubernetes, Rancher Desktop would shut down Kubernetes and bring everything up in that newer version with all of your workloads intact. And so you can test what it looks like to upgrade your workloads across an upgrade of Kubernetes. You also have the ability to disable Kubernetes. If you only want the container features and you don't need Kubernetes, you can disable it here. Or if you want to disable Trafic, Trafic is built in with K3S, the distribution of Kubernetes that shipped with Rancher Desktop. And if you don't want that taking over ports 80 and 443, handling ingress coming in, you can disable that by unchecking the box. Rancher Desktop comes with two container runtimes, ContainerD and DockerD. ContainerD, which is a CNCF project, uh, allow, is the container engine also used by DockerD. But there are some differences. If you want to use the Docker socket for integrated tools or you want the Docker CLI, you should choose DockerD. ContainerD is also paired with Nerdy Control. That is a Docker compatible CLI that lets you do the same kinds of things such as run, build, push, and pull containers all while you're using the ContainerD runtime. Now below that, you'll see you can set your memory and CPUs. This is different on each system depending how much you have available. And this works on Linux and Mac. On Windows, these settings aren't here because the Windows subsystem for Linux manages that for you. You also have the ability with the click of a button to reset Kubernetes to default or to reset Kubernetes and your whole container runtime to default with nothing in it if you want a quick way to clean things up. There's also things such as supporting utilities where you can link things into your path such as kubectl, helm, and other tools. On Windows, you can also expose your Kubernetes settings into other WSL distros. There's port forwarding and port forwarding uh, allows you to take services that you're running maybe internally in a microservice architecture that aren't exposed outside of Kubernetes, and you can forward those services out so local tools on your desktop can interact with them. Images lets you see the different images that you have, and it'll let you do things such as scan them for vulnerabilities. And troubleshooting helps you troubleshoot if you do come across a problem, if you want a factory reset, quickly get to the logs, or find support online. Now let's take a look at some of the features inside of Rancher Desktop besides that. Now I'm using the Docker runtime, and so I can just use regular Docker commands such as Docker images and list my images, and those all work. Here I have a code base, and if I open it up in Visual Studio Code, that code base is set up to use dev containers, a feature of Visual Studio Code. And if I go ahead and open it up, it'll prompt me to open it up in a dev container. And these containers are inside of your container runtime, and all of your development happens inside there. All of this clean integration works out of the box with Rancher Desktop. You can also do things such as build your application. So if I do docker build and I build my application, which has a docker file, that works as well. 
But other things on the Kubernetes side will work too. Let's say I helm, we're gonna install WordPress. And it knows how to talk to that local Kubernetes cluster running on your computer and it's able to install something. And you can see it working. And so you have a local Kubernetes environment that you can easily get up and running and you can work with, you can pick your version and it integrates with other container tools as well. And that's Rancher Desktop in a nutshell.